je ne comprends pas. Je voulais arriver aux places d'armes, mais je ne comprends pas comment je vais pour arriver là-bas. Il y a une hypocrisie là-dedans, c'est certain. Euh, compte tenu de l'empreinte carbone de, tout, de bouger tous ces gens-là de partout vers le monde, vers Montréal. C'est sûr que c'est très imposant puis euh, c'est peu agréable à voir, mais j'imagine que compte tenu de ce qui a été ce qu'on a connu par le passé, euh, c'est nécessaire. So, hey Alexa, for Ribbon News, and I'm currently in Montreal, and behind me is the Palais des Congrès. Why I'm here? Because tomorrow, it's officially the beginning of the two weeks of conference about the COP. 15. For the people who don't know what is the COP15, it is from the United Nations. It's a big summit about the, how to stop the decline of the species all around the world. So from a recent report from the WWF, we lost about 69% of our biodiversity. Mainly the COP15, was in two parts. The first part was held last year in China at Kunming. And they wanted to do the second part there, but since the international travelers are not still permitted to go to China, they decided to just move it in Montreal. So you need to know that the COP15 is chaired by China. So we are here to try to show you for the next couple of days and weeks coming what is going on with this conference. But what is interesting to see is the big fans that all around the Palais des Congrès, the presence of the police, we talk about RCMP, Sûreté du Québec, and also the Montreal police. Probably they have more units, we don't know yet. But until now, we saw it. We had the mounted police, police on bicycle, and police everywhere. It's really impressive. But they didn't think about Palais des Congrès, it's really where a lot of traffic is happening. So that conference and all this police enforcement are disturbing all the Montrealer in their daily day. 17,000 people from 192 countries and most of them are only representative or ministerial who are going to go to the conference in order to represent their country. The only, only leader who is maybe going will be Justin Trudeau. I'm from Thailand. Thailand? Yes. And so why it was important for you to be here uh, in Montreal for the COP15? Um, I'm joining the site event on behalf of uh, Biofin under the UNDP, United Nations Development Program. So we are, show we are showcasing our work in Thailand, especially the work for biodiversity conservation. Yep. But we know that the first part of the COP15 was mostly virtual, do you think that we should have done the same since it's for the climate change and for the decline of species? Yeah, I think climate change and biodiversity loss is the same thing. Yeah, because it affects like one or another. If you only focus on climate change, you cannot achieve any goal if you don't take care of biodiversity loss as well. Yeah, but should we have done that virtually since it just contribute to the climate change okay. and the pollution to bring as much people here? Mm. Yeah, I, I heard about the, the rule and regulation um, for for this uh, COP15 that they limited like some participants like from my side. So we 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 try to reduce like traveling as much as we can. Yeah. What is your point of view on this kind of conference that's taking part recently in November in Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt for climate change. And also we have the health summit in Berlin. Do you think we should just do one big conference and not like multiple one to reduce the carbon footprint? Yeah, I agree. If we can, yeah, we should like bring all the issues together and then we, we like, um, yeah, have only one big event instead of like multi event at the same time because it's quite, um, I mean, almost similar like a uh, period for COP27 and then COP15. 
Euh, je suis de la République démocratique du Congo. Pourquoi c'était important pour vous d'être ici aujourd'hui à Montréal pour prendre part à la COP15? C'est parce que avec la thématique actuelle, actuelle de réchauffement climatique, de perte de, de, de la biodiversité, je pense qu'il est important que les gens se réunissent pour essayer de discuter ensemble sur les mécanismes, les stratégies à mettre en place pour... Euh, euh, la préservation de la biodiversité et développer ensemble des mécanismes de mitigation des effets du changement climatique et songer, penser aux, aux générations futures. On emmène plus de 17 000 délégués à venir ici lorsqu'on a un problème avec déjà les changements climatiques et également avec le déclin des espèces. Trouvez-vous qu'on aurait dû faire le tout virtuellement? Je pense que c'est aussi important de, de se rencontrer pour essayer d'échanger de, de, ensemble. Pour, euh... En tout cas, je trouve que c'est important que ça, que ça se fasse en présentiel. Euh, lorsque les gens suivent des, des conférences en ligne, deux fois, ça, la concentration n'est pas là. Mais lorsque vous êtes en présentiel, je crois que c'est vraiment important. On sait que les Nations unies ont fait la COP27 à Sharm El Sheikh en Égypte en novembre dernier. On a eu aussi, juste avant, en octobre, le World Health Summit, le Sommet mondial de la santé qui a pris part. Oui. Trouvez-vous qu'on devrait faire seulement qu'une grosse conférence englobant tous ces sommets-là, au lieu de les faire dans différentes parties du monde où ce que les gens doivent voyager, utiliser des empreintes carbone encore plus? Trouvez-vous qu'on devrait faire ça pour limiter l'empreinte carbone que, que les gens dépensent? Alors, vous imaginez un peu, euh, avec le contexte actuel du coronavirus, euh, regrouper tout le monde dans un même... Euh, beaucoup de personnes à la fois euh, venant de plusieurs régions, mais c'est également des thématiques qui seront abordées. C'est totalement des thématiques qui sont différentes. Par exemple, lorsqu'on on aborde des thématiques qui sont liées au... Vous avez dit, le, le, c'était la santé, maintenant, climat. Vous voyez que ce sont des thématiques qui sont totalement différentes. Donc... Euh, vous avez apporté euh, le sujet de la COVID, euh, sauf qu'en ce moment, il y a 17 000 personnes provenant de partout dans le monde mmh. qui vont se rassembler dans une même place. C'est beaucoup de monde, oui. non? Euh, oui, effectivement, les organisateurs, ils ont mis des mécanismes en place pour se rassurer qu'il n'y aura pas de propagation. Par exemple, le matin, ben, avant d'entrer dans la salle de conférence, euh, vous, vous devez présenter hein, le résultat de test qui est négatif, effectué chaque matin avant d'avoir accès à la salle de conférence. Mais également, chaque participant doit venir avec sa carte de vaccination pour montrer qu'il a été vacciné contre le COVID. Et admettons que quelqu'un n'est pas vacciné par raison médicale, est-ce que vous trouvez que ça ne serait pas un peu de la discrimination de l'empêcher d'avoir accès à cette conférence-là qui est très importante? Alors là, je n'ai aucune idée. Ça, je... Ce sont des mécanismes qui ont été mis en place par les organisateurs. Je suis de l'Ouganda, l'Afrique. Do you think this is sustainable? Like, do you think that bringing 17 000 people is good for the planet, uh, for one conference that are just there for two weeks? I believe yes, because um, I'm sure the UN, and more so uh, the UN uh, Convention on Biological Diversity Secretariat, did a lot to control the number of people to come here. Others would have had more than half a million people. Mm -hmm. So they did to control, to sustain within the capacity that they can manage. Mm -hmm. So to me it's sustainable because they are managing within their capacity. So you, you're from Korea? Yes. Uh, I think COP15 is uh, like important because uh, we, are, we, we will concern about the next uh, 2030 like biodiversity framework for mm -hmm. next 10 years. So it is very important moment. And also we are facing the new technological like advancement, for example, synthetic biology and uh, genome editing technology. So uh, we think Uh, it's important to like so to progress in the discussion about those topics mm -hmm. in COP15, also including TSI and other issues as well. So, so since we have already some trouble with pollution, climate change, and also loss of species, um, we know that the first part of the COP15 was mostly virtually online. Mm -hmm. Should we have done the same for this one too? Uh, actually, at this meeting, we we will have like. Uh, like a face-to-face -face meeting so so this meeting is more important and decisive moment uh, compared to the previous online like platform of meeting I think 
17,000 people mm -hmm. would take a flight to come here. Oh, right. That will increase the carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's a little bit hypocritical to do this kind of conference when we have already some trouble with climate change? Uh, yes, your comment is uh, quite like, yeah, I agree with your point, but I think it's kind of uh, difficult to reach to the like, uh, agreement because there are so many parties and other organizations and non-parties as well. So it was quite important to have face-to-face -face meeting, especially in this time of concert about next 2030 global diversity framework. It's so important because it decides the further direction for the next 10 years framework for biodiversity. But uh, in terms of the online meeting, there were kind of uh, the critical comments from developed countries because it was quite difficult to participate in that kind of platform mm -hmm. so they had technical issues as well so they actually asked to like have face to meeting face to face meeting in terms of those kind of aspects so in that sense I think this this face to face meeting was necessary mm -hmm. This is one of many other examples of where people are joining their force to push the green reset. But at Ruben News, we did start a petition. And if you want to sign it, go to sign it massively at nogreenreset.com and make a difference because this is just the beginning.